All right, hello and welcome to episode two of Mind Chat. I'm here um, with Rob Newbury. Hello. Um, I'm Colin Gallagher, and this week we have a guest from um, Hong Kong. Would you like to introduce yourself, Mush Matt? Hi, uh, yes, I'm Michelle Chan. I'm currently working in Hong Kong. Uh, I'm at Key Water Bay School, and we're starting to implement Minecraft uh, with our year five. So. Yes, it's a very exciting time at our school, and I'm going to learn a lot from you guys. Yeah, so that's why me and Rob and I were, um, you know, your name was first on the list because you're at the stage where many teachers are around the world. You you know you want to use it. You've got a basic plan, and you're kind of starting off, so you've, you're kind of in the first few, I don't know, weeks or months of, of planning and setting up Minecraft and to <laughs> use in... Um, First of weeks, first weeks and months of <laughs> years. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I won't stop. It's gonna keep on going. Can't um, stop. Won't stop. So yeah. So what happened? So basically, let's just do a bit of a background here. We'll we'll talk about the world we're in. Um, if this is Rob's students' world, but just a um, bit of backstory on Michelle. At um, since the twenty first century learning conference in Hong Kong, you brought back the idea to your school about using Minecraft, or, or what happened there. I guess um, Minecraft's been, I don't know, around for a while now, and I know that a lot of kids at school were using it. Um, I noticed, you know, from all the Twitter and uh, various blogs and things that teachers are starting to use it um, in their schools. So when I came to, to, went to 21st Century Hong Kong, and actually I sat into your Minecraft session with uh, Sharon, mm -hmm. I just got to see how it really works in the classroom, step by step. Yeah. And you know, by luck, we were ready to do a unit that's all about organization, collaborative working, um, and so forth. So I felt like, well, you know, if, if we're going to try this, um, it's the perfect time now. And so I know, I also knew that there was Minecraft EDU because right. uh, I've been following some of the blogs. So I thought maybe that's an easy way to get into Minecraft. Mm -hmm. Um, the other, just, you know, lurching into Minecraft itself and trying try to start it with kids was a bit daunting, but mm. with maybe the EDU version, um, it just made it more simple for you know teachers who maybe did not have a lot of uh, tech background or tech help at the school. So yeah, just yeah. yeah. That's what Joel was saying last week in our first episode that it really is a, a massive help, Minecraft EDU because I've never seen the the back end Minecraft EDU. We we use Minecraft EDU just to purchase accounts. So I've never seen the back end, but he says it's, and I've, se I've seen videos of it, but I have never kind of gone in myself, but it seems to be really useful. So have you actually set it up and are you are you in Minecraft um, EDU yet? We, yeah, we're, because we're not going to start it, well, we're going to start it next week, hopefully. <laughs> um, but we just set it up on a few computers. So basically uh, you, you get the package, you right. install it onto, we've just purchased, um, enough for our IT lab. Okay. Uh, so we just installed it across a number of computers. Uh, one of the computers we set up as the serving server. Okay. Yeah. Um, as, you know, you log into the other computers, uh, you give them the LAN address and off you go, you're all in the world together. Just, you know, without any sort of, mm. without my technicians having to help me set up a server well, offshore or whatever. Yeah. Uh, it was just really, really simple. And the dashboard is, yeah, quite simple. I could choose various um, maps or lands um, and choose what type of setting, whether I wanted it to, to be a peaceful setting, creative, right. all that stuff. So very, very simple. So like you, on your um, teacher computer, you had like a, a, a administrator kind of client and on the student computers, you, they had like just client clients. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So all they see is really log into Minecraft EDU right. um, where I can see, I can log in as, uh, start the server, I can log in as a teacher, yeah, so forth. Mm. So maybe, you know, in a couple of weeks time we can we can pop back and uh, maybe go into your, oh, oh, so this is the disadvantage then of Minecraft EDU, we, we didn't touch on it last week, Rob, but is, it's, is, is it true that you can, like with Minecraft EDU, like it's a locally based thing, you don't, you, can you install Minecraft EDU on a server that you That's can go question. to the open world? Yeah. I don't know. I'm not, that's a good question. We've we've got um, let's see. I think we're up to seven servers now. Four of them are are hosted with Redstone, and then we've got mm. three that we've created on our Mac Pro. <laughs> it's the <laughs> worst use from a Mac Pro ever. But um, but we've got three that we've ran in there, and um, I've been I've been really toying with the idea of playing around with Minecraft EDU. Um, mm. 
especially since the conversation with Joel and um, and just looking at it, maybe just try something different. Right. So I thought if I was going to install it, I would install it on the Mac Pro. But I, w I, I don't think it would be too hard to install on a server. I, I can't imagine it being. I, I don't. There's there's not much too that that's too difficult about Minecraft to begin with. So. Yeah, I'm sure Joel would be able to shed some light on that at some point. So let's just um get out of this room here and uh, maybe yeah, you it's can a tell us. Yeah, yeah, so it's I'm getting a bit um <laughs> sweaty in here. Yeah. <laughs> and one of you smells. I don't know who it is. <laughs> it's probably Michelle. It's the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so well, where are we, Rob? Yeah. Oh yeah. Let me show you where we are. This this is this uh, welcome to the Chatsworth building competition. Um, our, our year six kids are doing their exhibition right now for the PYP. So, um, what they're doing is for they're they're studying natural disasters and their um their 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 idea is that um that technology has helped people through natural disasters and some of the things they're looking at are things like. Um, early warning systems and how um, you know monitoring earthquake activity or how people get the word out through Twitter or different things like that so they're studying the use of technology around natural disasters and then for their action they wanted to raise some money um, as a lot of uh, actions tend to sort of be is that they um, they want to raise money for the Red Cross and so one of the ideas that they had well, because Minecraft's huge at the school is that they would have a building competition and um, so they um, so they, what they did was they came up with these four categories that you can get, um, a, like you can you can enter in. You can enter in um, this area. This is for houses, so you can build the most uh, interesting house. Mm -hmm. And you can see that what they've done is they've built these rubrics uh, around uh, the different categories. So let's, if we look over here, this is pixel art, I think. So mm -hmm. they can create um, pixel art, you know, and they're looking at sort of um, the detail, creativity, mm -hmm size and the correct colors um, and then they've, they've got these sort of different uh, levels so a level four uses a lot of colors and you know the descriptor here is huge so that's the size of the pixel art is huge huge you know? yep and then this one is awesome and this one is very imaginative and detailed so that's cool yeah it's it's kind of fun. I mean, it's the the, the rubrics were a nice idea. They um they they loved the idea and they were all over it. And then they just kind of ran with it. So initially, when we created this world, it was really just I created the rubrics, just like I just built them for them to get them started. They came up with all the descriptors themselves, and then um and then I gave them the access to the server for about a day, and they just went nuts. And they've created these massive like you know like these huge elaborate trees and these these different sort of portals that you can get into different areas and stuff. The one thing I really like is down here it's the, uh, is the rules of the server, um, which okay. is something from the other end of the spawn area. And they've, uh, it's uh, right here, it's under uh, yeah. rules, the Minecraft server rules. And they've, they've really gone into detail here about what exactly you can't do. Don't destroy anybody's work, no hacking, no lying. <laughs> That's my favorite one. <laughs> and um, yeah, respect other people's creation, no swearing. For three times you swear and you're banned. So... Yeah, so that's the this is the world we're in right now. That's pretty cool. So um, the it was year six, um, year six, which is grade five. Of, is this is their baby? This is their world. Yep, this is it. This yeah. is the, and then you can see the um, so kind of where I am here, like these areas here. These are sort of fenced off areas. That's where the the, the individual students will um, will build their different things. Oh, let me just make it day again here because it's getting a little dark there. Um, so they'll they'll just choose a spot to start building and they'll just go for it. So, and when will when will so how will how will it be organized by so will they be given will the people that want to build and pay their money to enter um, be given the be on the white list or whatever or yep that's they exactly can it go at yep. do it at home and yeah they've got a Google form uh, like the kids have a Google form they made some posters advertising it they went to all the classrooms today and announced it and then um, there's a Google form for any team or individual that want to actually enter so. If um, if you want to enter, you fill out the form. You put your real name, your year, and then you have to have to add your Minecraft name. Mm -hmm. And then once we get all those just compiled in a big list, then we'll um, start uh, going through and uh, adding them to the whitelist, and then everybody goes. But we've got um, this was a pl a plugin you told me about, which was um, Core Inspect, mm. I guess. Yeah. And it's really nice because it doesn't need a database. So um, yeah. so we've got the plugins. We've got a no swearing plugin. We've got a lock app. We've got a few other things. So. We're yeah. not expecting any problems, um, especially because it's gonna be, it's gonna be whitelisted. So uh, yeah. yeah, it should be fun. Yeah, core and um, Just for people who want to know more about it, it's <laughs> I don't know how I found it. I think I was just searching through the plugins and and Bukit and um, 
it was too good to be true it was like because i remember last year for my eca i want i needed to do like a um a database of um you know you've si you've installed a plugin you left click on a block and it tells you who put it there when they put it there mm -hmm. um and if you right click on an empty oh. space um you can see who removed that block and when yep. they moved it yeah, because so that's not my, I don't know, not being a Minecraft expert, I was thinking, well, you've got all these kids unleashed mm. in a space. And, of course, most, you know, I would just suspect that most of them would do it uh, principally, but, you know, sometimes accidents happen and how do you track it down? Or if you have one person who's a bit of a vandal, mm. you know, how do you monitor that? But, obviously, I need to contact you about that mod. <laughs> yeah, I wonder how mods work within Minecraft EDU. I wonder, are you, are you limited or um, is it pretty flexible regarding you, what mods? You probably have the same amount of uh, uh, control, control, or maybe even more. Yeah. I think that um, I think that it's not a question of if. I, I think it really is a question of when, when it comes to griefing and uh, and mm. kids messing up each other's stuff. I don't think that it's always intentional. I think sometimes it's like, oh, I didn't know. Like we had a hilarious situation. I, I was talking about it and. Um, in Hong Kong about where one, two students built a house together and then they had an argument and they didn't want to be friends anymore in Minecraft so one of the kids just removed his part of the house <laughs> like he just, he just he just dismantled all the things that he's done you know and left this half built house so it, you know it's just yeah it's just the way it's going to go it's really interesting because it's a it's a some it's a new space for them like I know a lot of the students play Minecraft solo player but when they start playing with with students in their school a whole lot of new sort of dilemma moral dilemmas pop up about you know you know building stuff you know how close can you build to somebody else without yeah. getting on their nerves and just like you said there you know if you work on a building with a friend you know and then you <laughs> fall out <laughs> with each other then you know is is it morally acceptable to demolish your building your part of the building that you that you um that you worked on it's it, and it's, yeah. it's great. It's a great experience for them. So I know Michelle, like when you know, you will. It's best to have. I, I think it's best to have these little um, plugins in place before you start the uh, before you start any sort of live world when before the students get in, just so you have you know the the backup plan. So m you know, mm. um, core protect. So yeah, you just inst you just activate it and you don't have to worry about anything. It's just weird. I don't know how it works without a database backing it up. Um but it's it's fantastic. So um I've had to Michelle, use it once or twice. Go ahead. So can I ask you can I ask you a question? I wanted to know um as a teacher who's new to this, what was it about like what was it that that just that was like sort of like the final straw where you're just like okay, that's it. I've got to get involved. Like why why now? And I mean, besides, I mean, you talked about Hong Kong and everything like that. But I mean, had you been thinking about it before Hong Kong, or was Hong Kong like, sort of like the, the proverbial straw on the camel's back kind of thing? Um, I guess when I returned to Hong Kong, I was back in this ICT role because I'm the learning technologies support teacher here. So um, I have more say about you know some of the initiatives I guess the school undertakes. Um, but it, you know, it was just been in. I think I was exposed to it more just because of the people I follow on Twitter, etc. And you know, it was, and just the number of kids that I hear talking about it. It was interesting because as soon as I got back from the 21st century and thought about this would be perfect for the year fives, I just went around the cl year five classrooms and asked, you know, put up your hand who does Minecraft. And, you know, in every class, and we have four classes per year level, at least half of them put up their hands. So it was like great time to tap into, you know, this enthusiasm. And when I can see the sort of the learning and, and teaching that can go on with Minecraft, I thought, well, you know, why aren't we utilizing this enthusiasm um yeah so it, you know and it's relatively well i guess relatively cheap we had some money in the budget yeah um and you know i feel like i have the support as well like just support around the you know ict network ict teaching network so i just thought why not just have a go and see what um see where we get yeah i did have a impromptu meeting with all the minecrafters at lunchtime and they were just so excited they were just telling me all about it um because one of the initial fears i think with teachers is that you know how am i going to teach the kids if i don't know how to do it myself right but um i mean i'm for me because i'm oh who built that already yeah, I'm just, <laughs> oh, we're just kind of yeah. just going away here yeah idle around. hands um yeah um you know they were willing to help one child even actually offered to you know uh set up the server for me <laughs> right <laughs> nice but, you know, they were just so enthusiastic and they were enthusiastic actually just to share um, their knowledge and they were 
thinking, well, this, you know, for this particular unit about working together, collaboration, you know, they could see that, um, you know, them peer tutoring others, they can see them working together and seeing how they can sort out problems within a virtual world, which, you know, they're very enthusiastic about. Uh, one kid came to me at the end of, we're on holidays at the moment, but I said, oh, you know, are we, do, are we doing Minecraft? Are we doing Minecraft when we get back? And I was like, well, you know, you just need to wait. But I think, yeah, it's just tapping into that enthusiasm and, um, you know, having the sport around me now, I feel like, you know, why not? Uh, what can go wrong, really? <laughs> <laughs> not a lot. I think oh. you'll... you'll, 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 you'll I have a few things, but there I, th I feel like any any kind of issues that have happened with Minecraft have been fantastic learning moments for everybody, teachers, students, and me. <laughs> sure. And uh, you, you learn as you go along. Like you know, I don't know what specifically you're going to do with your your unit of work in Minecraft, but um, you know, you'll plan it and you'll do it. But you'll definitely make changes next year when you when you do it again. I think one of um. Uh, the kids, I think, will be a big part of it. Um, teachers that I spoke to were very enthusiastic. Otherwise, you can't really get this off the ground. Right. My fear, I guess, my biggest fear is actually uh, making sure that the parents are on board. Right. That they don't think we're just playing, um, that we explain how we're using this game yeah. um, in their learning. In the... I, think, I don't know whether yeah. you guys have ever sent... Yeah, I did. Home. We did. Yeah, uh, we sent home a letter. Time for everything else, right? But yeah, no. we sent home a letter because, um, yeah, exactly like you said, par if parents hear about Minecraft being used in the classroom, and children, students will go home and say, "Oh, I have to do Minecraft for homework." Yeah, <laughs> because they did say that to their parents. Um, but yeah, I think we, we we just drafted up a letter saying this is why we're doing it. This is it. Um, we have we got the admin on board as well, just in case parents um, parents came to the admin saying you know we're worried about you know this game being used in in class. But um, no, we had full support too. It's it's you you need it and it, it, it's it's a, it's a massive help. And then at the end of the unit, got all the parents in just to see what what was being done and you know have a play around yourself you know yeah mm. we're um we're starting off just doing minecraft within the school yeah uh, partly no, no, that's good that's fine well, um because we we've got a level 32 so we can buy we bought just over that number of licenses and if we had to send it home we have 120 kids per year level so it would have been 120 licenses uh, uh okay. although some kids already have their own but yeah. Yeah, that's true. So we're just beginning. We just thought, well, you know, let's just start small. I uh, will keep it within school so we can monitor it. Mm. We'll see how it goes. So yeah, you, you you bought thirty accounts? Uh we bought thirty five. So 30 we've got accounts. enough for the thirty in the. We've got thirty kids per year level uh, per class. Right. So we've got enough for each child and the teachers to have it on their own computer as well. Right. And so have you thought, you know, deeply at all yet about you know what exactly? Is going to happen over the next what is it going to be six week unit of work it's uh six to eight weeks yeah. um the students are actually part of this unit are setting up uh businesses organizations so um they've already got a unit where you know they're doing a lot of things outside of minecraft anyway this is just a right. sort of add on so that we can test yeah. uh worth i guess um so they're actually going well at the moment thinking about building their virtual shop fronts for these businesses that they're uh, creating so um, we are going to set up a community uh, similar to what Sharon was presenting at 21st century where you know plan together as a class mm. you know, on the whiteboard piece of paper first assign everyone a plot and then each group themselves will have to build their own shop because there's about five or six kids per uh, per shop so and then we'll see yeah see how that goes because they've got very because we're only doing within school it's a very limited time so they really mm. need to work well together be on point and, yeah uh not being fluffing around a bit <laughs> yeah and that's you know i don't know about you rob you know um I, it's it's a bit sometimes for some children it's it's a bit hard to kind of differentiate you know no matter how many times you say it you know this is minecraft in school this is not the minecraft you play at home 
it's the same mm. game obviously but you know yeah. we've got we've got you know we've got goals to meet you have to reflect every day in every time you're on minecraft in school um so yeah no you you know you do catch students you know having a sword in their hand when they shouldn't <laughs> when yeah. they shouldn't you know and they don't need to have it but it's cool you know but um like yeah, i say that's part of the reflection process about yeah you know, how well they're working how well they're keeping on task um yeah no that'll be fun it'll be it's cool i'm, I'm excited for you and your, your i think um I, I actually had a question about minecraft the other day i was actually wondering like is I mean, I know that we would probably think, yeah, it is, but is Minecraft, is it, is it a game? I mean, if you, had to, if you had to say, okay, well, let's talk about Minecraft or whatever it is, um, I'm not sure if I would say that, that definitively it's a game. I mean, well, what happened to that picture? Jeez. Um, yeah. I mean, I know it's, it started off as a game and everybody plays it like that and it's, you know, and it's fun and all those things, but um, has it gone beyond being just a game now? You know? It's almost like virtual Lego. You know, yeah. is Lego a game? You can make it a game. You can sort of do role playing, um, like we're doing, I guess, in the units. Um, I I find it very therapeutic, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And look at us just building blocks here. I just, you know, I'm losing track of the conversation though. <laughs> when I'm <laughs> watching. Oh, sorry, did I break that or did Rob? <laughs> I did that. Sorry. <laughs> I can I can't believe that he can talk and build this wonderful room in the same time. <laughs> you'll 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 get there. You'll get there. Yeah, this becomes second nature after a while. Um, I think Minecraft, if you play it uh, uh, on a single player adventure mode, it's a game because mm -hmm. you know it's a quest. You're mm -hmm. meant to you're meant to get stuff, but I think it transcends a game when you're working together to just to create to just create stuff. I say no to create stuff. Um, I think it. I, I yeah, you're right though. I, I can't really label it as as a game when it's something no, it's like this. You know it. It's what's going on? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of word have you got there? <laughs> See, what there's is this? Begin, beginner Minecrafter here. Just blow, just demolishing things. <laughs> no, I think I built something up, but I chose the wrong type of wood. Yeah, oh, don't fine. worry about it. That's fine. All... It'll all be erased tomorrow, I'm sure. Well, the kids are going to be, they're going to be, I'm sure that one of them will come into the game tonight and be like, what happened? Who, <laughs> who built this thing? Well, we can, we can give money to charity and we can, sure. um, yeah, we we'll can, uh, just, yeah, we'll we'll just, win. We'll yeah. just have it here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's not even. It was interesting when I bumped into those children when I first came into this world. Yeah, how, tell that, that's how, they story. Were, how protective they were of their world, but they were also willing to explain exactly what was going on, which, you know, it was fantastic. They were very, very engaged. I did ask them, you know, um, how long had they been in the world for? They were in there quite a well. while. Oh, so that's, you know, that's why the the world is as beautiful as it is, I guess. Yeah, they must have been pretty excited about it. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, I had the same experience um, a few months ago. Um, I was logging into Minecraft at school and I saw a, a LAN world pop up on the list. So I said, oh, who's doing that? So I went in, and um, there was a couple of grade six students that I taught last year, and they all just immediately, like you just said today, Michelle, just flocked to me. If they weren't near yes. me, they teleported to me. Yeah. <laughs> it, was yes, exactly. it was like, oh, this is scary, but they all knew who I was. They knew my name, so they were like so excited just to show. They were building um, an Egyptian theme park for humanities class, and right. the teacher was just like, yeah, do it. It works, you know, so... It was cool to see it like being used, I think, s student led, you know, yeah, in middle school. That was that was really good to see. I had a funny conversation with our English teacher today. He said, um, he said, uh, hey, uh, can you come to my year nine class and, and talk about Minecraft? Because the, the kids are going to be building, they're doing a unit on Shakespeare and uh, theater in Shakespearean times. And so they're, uh, they're going to have to build, uh -huh. using Minecraft, they're going to build a. Um, a replica of one of the theaters like yeah. they can choose the theater and and uh and build it and use different materials and explain why they're doing it the way they're doing it. so yeah it's kind of fun that'd be cool that's one thing i kind of i i, I wonder how it would works like you know if, if like in a middle school or high school because i don't work with middle school or high school um regularly um if they've got like a a, a small enough project like that like build a shakespearean theater like in the round or the globe mm. theater or whatever you know how how focused are these students? You know, uh, you know, 
just doing that and just being being happy and being directed to do that you know if they are minecrafters at home you know I, I just i wonder about the the psyche of the middle school high school student you know more about that age than than i do it's a good question because um i i know maybe michelle probably has a lot of thoughts on this too is that um there's a huge disconnect between i find between um the amount of girls that play and the amount of boys that play. Mm -hmm. There are definitely girls that play. I mean, I think this is why I'm, I'm really excited about the year nines getting started on this is because um, because there's going to be girls that are going to be you know building and um, you know and I always find that um, that the girls have a different take on things. Like they 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 play the game differently. They I mean the game. There's we talk again, but mm -hmm. they do things differently. They build things differently. They have um, their they just their approach is very different. Um, I've got a couple of girls that come to the Minecraft CCA, and they're they're in year seven, and um, I think one's in year eight, and you know they're so excited about what they're doing, and and they like they they sit on their own. Three of them sit by themselves, and um, you know they don't want to they don't want to build in the land world with the boys. And when the boys try to come into their land world, they like oh, get out of here. This is this our world, you know, and you know it's almost like their little their club, you know, and it and I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, I think that. Some of the people might not get it. I think that there's there's not not everybody's going to be a uh, you know right into this whole thing, and some of them might find it really frustrating. I think that'll be a really interesting challenge, um, because I've never met anybody who didn't like it. Right? I've never met anybody who were like, "This is dumb. What a right. stupid game." You know, like it, it just, <laughs> not, you know, it's just I've never I've never had that experience. So. I think um, Mata have said that. <laughs> right. I'm sure a lot of people probably yeah. Uh, since, yeah, no, no, no. When I've actually now that I know how to use it and actually did a little bit more research about how to use it, then no, it's been very therapeutic. Like I said, I, I actually like building things. Like I don't like um, the survival mode that much. I actually get the jitters. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> It's, a, it's uh, amazing no, how how the the single world actually just is so a atmospheric and scary. With I find yeah, no, we I was we were talking about this last week. I remember the first night I spent in a cave <laughs> in a darkened cave weeping with terror. <laughs> That's what I, I still build myself this one, you know, yeah, a cave or a just this block enough for me to stand in and block myself in. <laughs> <Really>. Yeah. And <laughs> just wait for wait for light and try to find some coal somewhere so you can make torches. Yeah. But like I think it, you know, I think we touched on this last week and I don't want to repeat myself, but it does when you, when you start when your students start, you'll find yourself wanting to build more with them, you know. I find it quite lonely going into Minecraft on my own single player if there's not like students or, yeah. or other teachers there to 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 work with and you know cooperation is a big part of the draw to it as well that was the thing for us when we w sorry michelle when, when when we first when the when the game first came out we were it was we were only ever um we were only i mean i we played single player for a little bit i know i did and then mm. um and then it was like hey let's how do we get a how do we play together and then we we found a way we could play in the same server and then it was just like non-stop it was always like oh hey um are you going to the server or yeah, you and Tyler are building the this yeah. you know this thing, and you know you. I remember you and Kiki one night. I think for about two hours, you and him built that huge cathedral. Mm. You know, do you remember? Like, I remember. That would, yeah. yeah, with all the torches and everything. I still have that did somewhere you, saved. I do. So did you play in survival mode with your friends, or you it's really creative mode? It was always creative, Michelle. Yeah, we, I don't think I've ever played uh, survival mode with uh, with friends. But mm. we did. We did. When we started off, we started off with in creative. Like I, we just had this creative server, and that was the only one we started with. And um, and everybody was like, "Yeah, this is great." And we built crazy stuff, and we built these. You know, I had this enormous treehouse, and I built this bat cave, and there was this, there, there was just massive stuff when we first. I've got a video of it somewhere, and it was really exciting, and everybody was really into it. And then a bunch of kids were like, "You know, we need to do we need to do some survival." And I was like, "Really?" And they're like, "Yeah, we totally want a survival server. Can we switch it to survival?" So I got another server and we started going with survival and that was a lot of fun too because then all these alliances started like there's like the four of us have this house together and and you can't come in or yeah. you know we'll trade you some fish or you know like can you you know and and that was a lot of excitement too because I was just I ended up just being this fisherman and I would just be like I I, I built a rod and every day the kids would just walk by and I'm I'm standing <laughs> on the edge of this dock just fishing all day that's all I did I just played this game and I had this tiny little hut and I just fish all day and then the kids would be coming up to me like Mr. Newbury can I get some fish I'm gonna die you know and so I was like well what do you what can you trade for it you know like what do you have to trade the weird old fisherman who's sad. Yeah. By the sea every day for exactly. ten hours. Yeah. <laughs> funny. I had yeah, like so I just started our ECA our after school club just two weeks ago and 
I just kind of said, yeah, it's creative, you know, it's, you know, there's 20 of us and we could build a nice little world together. But uh, if, I, if I'd made a survival server to go with it, I think it would get a bit diluted. And I think the boys would like to play the survival and the girls, th um, not kind of stereotyping here, but I think they are more into the creative stuff. And that's, that's how we're, so are most of the boys, but there's a lot of like veterans, <laughs> Minecraft veterans in grade five, yeah, veterans. Who um who like the survival stuff and I like, you know, making. There are elements of the survival mode that you can turn switch on and off, can't you? It's not you can. Is right. it like for instance, uh, I mean, hunger and uh, what else? What is it with um? Well, hunger for instance is one mm. thing that you can. Yeah, and monsters on. off and on. Off, off, yeah. Yeah. So you've got you you've got Minecraft EDU. I think it's pretty much similar to. So we we. Um, Rob and I have MC my admin on our servers, and it's mm. yeah. There's a, just a couple of switches like enable monsters, enable survival, or enable um, combat or whatever it is. So um, yeah, you can you can tinker with it, and then you can obviously add your plugins and stuff. And the nice part about it is that even if you, if you've got one server, you can even save it and um, and you know reload it. Like you can save save the world, you know, back it up, erase it, b start a new one in survival. Play that for a while, back it up, erase it, and then put, mm -hmm. reinstall your original creative one. So, you know, when you have one server, you can really just, um, you know, you can play around with it quite a bit. It gets messy after a while. You're gonna have to remember, like, did I delete the world first? And if you try to reinstall it on another thing, mm -hmm. uh, that kind of, that stuff comes with time. Mm -hmm. you know? And it's always yeah. just like, you know, Collins just to Skype chat away to get started on it or to, you know, get mm -hmm. a hand. Yeah. I want to take a walk around this area now that it's night to see these uh, all these glowstones and what they look like. Yeah, I'll go up onto the sky. I think we're going to wrap it up for this episode this week. I think um, that's that's been an awesome conversation. I think, Michelle, we'll want to drop back in to touch base with you in a couple of weeks when you're actually in the <laughs> midst of whatever the <laughs> whatever you're in the midst of. <laughs> yeah. Be still cr creating Minecrafting and you can't get me back on. <laughs> yeah, yeah it'll be like, don't talk. Yeah, I can't talk. Minecrafting. <laughs> yeah. So um, that's yeah, we'll, we'll call it a day. My, uh, Michelle, thanks for joining us for this episode. Thank you, guys. And we, we'll see you. Yeah, it was great to talk to you. Yeah, it's fantastic. We'll, we'll, um, we'll touch base in a couple of um, episodes' time. So this is the end of episode two for Mind Chat, and we'll see you next week. Bye bye. <laughs>